Man, that guy really needed some coffee. He can really put it down, too. Weird that it was in a shot glass, though. Anyways, uh, time to see what Viridian Forest has for me. Oh, sweet! A free item! Or a Voltorb. One way to find out. Yes, it's a potion! That's empty. Huh, that's weird. Oh, but there's something else here, too. Heck yeah! An empty antidote. And this is just two halves of a great ball. What the heck is going on here? Hey guys, and welcome to another video of me trying to make the fictional world a little more real. Today we're traveling to the world of dragons and fairies to look at a very real problem that the Pokemon world is facing. Trash. No, no, not them. No, no not, not them either. There we go. That's more like it. Yeah, if you clicked on this video thinking it was going to be a rant from some Gen 1-er against the new Pokemon designs, then my title worked. Sorry about that. I'm actually quite fond of the new designs. But what I'm not fond of is littering. Huh. Litter bugs. This is why I joined the force. How's that for a transition? Something you, the main character, don't seem to be bothered by. Why do I say this? Well, let's take a look at Pokemon's fountain of youth in a bottle, the potion. The potion and its other medicinal relatives are all man-made, mostly spray-type bottles. From the looks of it, they seem to be made at least partially out of plastic and are a one-time use kind of thing. To see why this matters though, picture this. You're in a battle with your rival Wienerbutt, or Yusuk, or whatever super clever name you gave him, when all of a sudden you hear it. Hold on. Any second now, there we go. Gotta love Gen 4. In a rush to prevent a whiteout, you grab a potion from your pack and use it. Whew, disaster averted, right? But then what? Its bag slot is freed up from where you used it, and from the looks of it, you don't have a to recycle later pocket. So do you pause the battle and run off to the nearest trash can? Obviously not, there's no running away from a trainer battle, so that's off the table. So what happens to this single use plastic bottle? The only possible answer is that you're using them and then chucking them to the ground, too busy to get your Metapod back in action to care about polluting your local Route 4. And that's a big problem, especially when you consider this applies for Pokeballs as well. I can only imagine what the area around a Legendary looks like. All of this trash is gonna add up, building up day after day, leading to things like the formation of microplastics. Microplastics, if you haven't heard this buzzword of the day, are exactly what they sound like, microscopic pieces of plastic. To be specific, anything less than 5 millimeters in length, according to NOAA and the European Chemicals Agency. Their small nature lets them get everywhere. Like, sand levels of everywhere. From the water you drink to the air you breathe, which, if that's not obvious, is very not good. They form during either the construction or deterioration of plastics. So you can bet all those potions, paralyzed heels, and whatnot lying around are going to be creating their fair share of microplastics, eventually getting into the water system or getting kicked up in the dust. Meaning the same item that healed your Pokemon could be coming back to bite you in the th throat, most likely. But it's not just the trainers who have to be weary of this. Trash like scrap metal and plastic is also a large killer of habitats, as it can release toxins into the environment damaging the ecosystem. Or it's just simply eaten. Again, very not good. At least, depending on the Pokemon. Dudes like Grimer eat worse than frat boys at a community college. And I should know. I was one of them. Heck, Pokemon like Grimer and Trubbish were literally made out of the overabundance of trash in this world. And the moon's x-rays, which I don't really get, but that's cool I guess. And while Cursula was born from climate change, not just pollution, almost all of Corsula's dex entries state how it needs a habitat free of pollution to live. Something it's not likely to get for much longer. In fact, a large portion of our trash has a nasty habit of somehow ending up in our oceans and lakes. It's so much that it's led to something you've probably heard about before, known as the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. It's made up almost entirely of plastics, a lot of the microplastics, and it has an estimated surface area of 1.6 million square kilometers. In case you're not as familiar with that, uh, that's three times the size of France, or twice the size of Texas, which I didn't realize Texas was bigger than France. It's kind of funny. But more to the point, this thing is 
stupidly big. And thankfully, there's lots of great programs going on to help clean it up. You probably heard about the great ocean cleanup that Mr. Beast did a little while back. But unfortunately, trash finds a way. And if it finds a way in our world, it's finding a way in the Pokemon world, meaning Cursula and a bunch of other ocean-dwelling Pokemon are gonna have some unwelcome visitors. All the blame isn't on you, though. The rulers, presidents, queens, whatever, of these Pokemon regions are also to blame, whoever they may be. Waste management is notoriously bad in Pokemon games. Heck, one of the largest concentrations of trash cans is found in Lieutenant Surge's gym. Which is fair, because that mechanic is garbage! <laughs> and Alola had it so bad that they had to bring in Grimer to help with garbage disposal. It's the whole reason we have Alolan Grimer now. Heck, at this rate, Pokemon's gonna have to come up with the used medicine Pokemon. Yeah, that's... hmm. You know, on second thought, maybe just try a no items challenger instead. Ooh boy, that was kind of a doubter. And don't worry though, the next video is gonna be a little more chill. Less doom and gloom and more trashy hotel room. How's that for a teaser? Either way, thanks for watching. If you're one of the 33 people currently subscribed to me, hi mom, you may have noticed my name changed. That sure is a thing I did. I thought I'd have more to say about it, but nah, not really. I just thought Bombi sounded more complete as a name. Anywho, thanks for watching up to my ramblings about name changes. That's gonna do it for this video, and as always, thank you guys for watching.